them. Oh, that's what James is going to be reviewing, and he's going to be eating uh, strawberry, kiwi berry, and blueberry waffle with coconut cream. It looks and ski rumptious. I'm just going to mention bone, bones for a minute here. And, oh, take uh, your time on that. Okay. Here, it's actually a reason it's a good show. Well, I'm, James and my mother like this show a lot, and so I really only watch... Um, bones when I want to think about um, either of them, mostly my mom, because uh, she watches the show. And we were visiting her recently, and which I still haven't recovered from, but we managed to get a good hike in today, so it's better than I've been able to do. <laughs> want to make it clear. The way you put it, it sounded as though you haven't recovered from visiting your mom. Oh, no, I haven't recovered from the trip. From the it trip. It took a lot out of me. Um, I don't I don't know. Like, my health, I really got to keep on things. I got to keep hiking. I need two big hikes a week. I need them. Um, there's no getting around it. I think most people uh, need to exercise every day or something like yeah. that. But I go downhill really fast if I don't get it. So um, I think that probably has something to do with it. And it probably when I'm not at home, then I'm not going to eat as well. And we well, were, uh, the we diet eating. suffered a little bit. Um, things that I, I would like to eat. Everyone mm. wants to eat things like nachos, right? It's fun. Well, we ate more nuts than anything else. But uh, uh, the nuts uh, were probably way healthier for me than they yeah, are for, for me. Yeah. Just because of the fat sort yeah. of thing. Not yeah. that you put on fat, so, it's just the fat gets in uh, your bloodstream and stuff yeah. that causes some problems. But I managed to get a good song today. Uh, done, so that was good. But yeah. I didn't so, do the, the whistle part. There, at the end of the Love Will Lift Me, I, I want to have a whistle that goes, well, I can't whistle, so I can't do it. Yeah, but well. it goes, da, 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 da. Whistling. <laughs> I'm a lousy whistler. I can't go high and low. It's uh, mm. I don't know how people do it. You kind of have to adjust your mouth when you go high and low singing. Mm. How do you do that with whistling? Mm. Anyway. I don't know. Some people whistle like birds. They whistle very pretty. Yeah. And that's what I want that to sound like, like a bird. Because yeah, it's love will lift me, right? Yeah. It to be like a bird at the end. We just don't want to sound like that crow <laughs> we heard today. It sounded as though it was in really morning. Sad, yeah, yeah, I think it had lost a loved one. I think so. He was mm. flying along, and and it sounded like he was kind of calling for somebody. But uh, it sounded kind of like, like blue, blue. hopeless, you know. Mm -hmm. it's a, yeah. yeah, it sounded very sad. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so my mom watches Bones, and so we watched some Bones that she had on. I don't know. She has some sort of a TV. You guys all know about all these fancy TV systems. James and I, this is how we watch TV when we do. Um, yeah, and the other thing is that it's on a little pink Disney TV. <laughs> yes, not, my, my little no, Disney TV that really does not work very well. The <laughs> buttons that I push. It used to have a remote that looked like a magic wand, which was very cool. And it had a crown on it, which was also <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so it was... Made for pre-adolescent girls, <laughs> I presume. I can't see so it. So good. It's but hilarious. It no longer it's has the crown, and no. it no longer has its magic wand, because its but magic it's... wand stopped working. So I was like, yeah. okay, well. It still works, though. You know? <sighs> Barely. But anyway, if one has patience, then it, it, it will works. work eventually. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, we got back here, and... After watching some bones with my mom, I thought, well, what would I like to borrow from the library to watch? I shouldn't rub my eye because last time I did that, I had something that wounded my eye for several days. It's finally now just starting to recover, so mm -hmm. I really have to remember not to rub it. I think that's probably how it happened. I probably, I, I go out and I disinfect things a lot, yeah. um, so I bet that was it. I bet I burnt my eye with some like Disinfected. bleach wipes or something, yeah. you know? that. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't have it on my hands. I don't use the bleach wipes with my hands. I put gloves on. But somehow, something happened. My eye was wounded. 
I don't know what happened. Didn't look that good. You probably no, felt terrible. All felt terrible. But anyway, so I watched the bones, and this is the eleventh and whatever season, eleventh uh, and twelfth. And there's only three discs from twelfth season, and I can't imagine that they only put out three discs for twelfth season twelve. But I don't know. What do I know? Um, but yeah, it's a good time. I I hadn't seen these the eleventh and twelfth season. I we I saw remember when seeing she one. Got over me. Yeah, and that's I would like to mention that that I'm really impressed with the um, the fans of Bones, I guess. Yep. Because um, the actress who plays Bone became overweight, and but was, was she really having kids? Well, Maybe that's, that's probably it. Yeah. yeah, because a lot of the time that's what happens when people start having. Usually, I've heard women say, "Oh, the first one it was fine, but the second, I lost it all," you know, or whatever. And like, yeah, I was the second kid, and my mom said, "I got." <laughs> Uh, what was it? Uh, diabetes when when I was carrying you and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. yeah I guess problem. it's tough on on women. Uh, anyway. She was kind of joking. Yeah. She she loved it. Uh, I I'm told that I was the favorite of the kids. So anyway, she gained weight, and the fans stayed. Right. They kept watching bones and. And even when um, the love interest and, in, you know, there's this thing between... Um, Bones and Booth. Yeah. And usually when that's finally resolved, I guess, when they finally get together in a show, mm -hmm. that wrecks the, the show. It's it's more people. Oh, will they? Will they? You know? It seems to be but the they, smooch of death. They, they yeah, know. it does. But the fans didn't even seem to care, yeah. and um, they had children. Fans stayed. Yeah. It's amazing. So um, that's really all I wanted to say about the Bones seasons. Is yay Bones fans? You guys are great. I think maybe it. Uh, it's because it reflects certain things you see nowadays. Uh, you got women who are actually more intelligent than marrying men. Um, well, and, that's uh, another thing about the show, isn't it? It's in that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Our neighborhood watch. Right. Anyway. At the same time, I mean, I am. I suppose perhaps I am old-fashioned that way, but I, I do believe that there has to be a parent at home to take care of the children. And I don't think um, school and daycare and babysitters and doesn't, doesn't do it. got to have somebody raising the children. Um, but anyway, and in this show, they both keep their careers and they're both... I mean, they serve a very important function, each one of them, very important functions for society. So, anyway, in this fictional sure. show. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, there are people that do. Um, are FBI investigators and forensic scientists who are trying to um, track down the bad guys. Now, there was one thing said in this show that I thought, well, that's not quite right. Um, well, there's, I mean, there's always some things, but with this um, temperance, Bones said to Booth at one point, she, they were talking and, and she said, well, you know, catching the killers, it's a, it's a kind of vengeance that we do. And it, I don't see it that way. I see it as a protection, and the fact that, I mean, I hear people saying, oh, why why aren't um, the police protecting me against this whatever, this the potential threat or whatever, and, you know, you'll hear people say things like that all along, and really that isn't their function, and 
people can be upset about that and think, well, you wait until somebody's already killed before you do anything about it. But in our society, we have innocence until proven guilty. And honestly, as much as it sucks when there's somebody who is very threatening and you can you sense that they're threatening whatever and you can't you have that um you end up having to lock yourself away in your house like you're a prisoner to try to keep yourself away from these potential threats or whatever but it's very important <laughs> that people are innocent until proven guilty you know you can't just just think oh well um Let's get out our torches and our pitchforks and go after this person that seems threatening. I mean, no, not if they haven't actually done anything to prove that they're threatening, um, then they, they aren't. They aren't until they have proven. So, I don't know how you feel about that, James, but... So. Um, there's looking threatening, and then there's... They're not acting threatening. Mm -hmm. There's actually being threatening, like uh, saying things. Mm -hmm. Or there was one fellow a while back, a couple of months back, threatened us with a piece of sitting machinery. Mm. And that's, uh, that's a different kind of threatening. And uh, the guy. Uh, should have lost his job and well, uh, probably should be uh, institutionalized. Be in yeah. Um, but no, I mean, what I think is that the police are not really there to um, protect the, the victim of a crime, they're de there to protect the next victim, really. It has to be that way. Mm -hmm. They often say that they really can't prevent crime. They, mm -hmm. they're, uh, they're just uh, solve it. Well, they prevent the next one. You know, if somebody has already proven themselves to be, mm -hmm. and particularly when they're like uh, stalkerish types, like. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, rejected husbands or stuff like that. Um, and then the they're, they're protecting the person they're protecting is the same person who had the crime committed to mm -hmm. against them. Well sometimes it takes them a long time to protect the next person. Or sometimes it takes them a while to figure out, oh it's this person. Well oh, it's a serial killer. Um, uh, yeah, she was saying it's kind of like vengeance. And that sounds like Michelle Foucault's kind of Yeah, attitude I don't think her. it's a vengeance at all. I think there's this, a certain idea, and it's been around a long time, that uh, jails are for reform. There are all sorts of left wingers and going around saying, jails don't work. All they do is uh, form a uh, kind of like a club where an uh, educational system where young uh, folks, impressionable folks, get in there and then they get turned into hardened criminals. Well, we've actually got good case studies. Thanks to the commies. Other people, but commies in particular. So if people are stuck in jail and that turns them into hardened criminals, let's look at the political prisoners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. How many got turned into? Yeah, exactly. None. Yeah. <laughs> Minus one. Yeah. So that's, uh, and uh, of course, it's uh, uh, left wingers that were doing that to uh, uh, people who didn't like uh, their the nature of their left wingedness. I'm talking about commies and, and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, like that, that's a ridiculous thesis that uh, putting people in jail turns them into criminals, you know? Yeah. Or it makes them hard, more hardened criminals. Here's the deal. You put them in jail, 
are going to find criminals. By definition, to deal with the real criminal. Mm -hmm. You don't put them in jail. They're going to be congregating with each other anyway. That's what gangs are about. Yeah. You guys ever heard about the mafia? Yeah. And so often, mafia people don't go to jail. Yeah. Why? Because people don't want to testify against them. When people, uh, when Daigle ended testifying against them, they end up disappearing. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, I think it's a, a silly thesis, the thing with uh, there is a certain degree of reform that happens as uh, people mature, particularly guys 15 to 25 years old. Some guys are going to turn it around. And I think that would be whether they're in jail or not. No? I don't think jail has much to do with it. Here's what jail is about. Jail is, um, it sure should serve as a bit of a deterrent. But Geez, I don't want to go to jail. Kind of like that. I want people figuring out. But the main thing is, if it is a punishment, it's just sticking folks with people that they that are like themselves. That's uh, the worst punishment. You got one criminal, he's got to hang out with other criminals, uh, and it's a double punishment because they don't get to hang around with uh, people that they can exploit. You know? Like uh, it's it's uh, wolves have to hang out with each other, snarling and snapping and stuff like that. And they can't be exploiting the lambs out there. No? And uh, I don't really think uh, people uh, can be uh, reformed by outside influences. Um, some people kind of do it by, as I say, some people, you know, guys, once they turn 25, they kind of mellow out a little bit. It's just something more internal. So uh, the, what, what jail serves as is a way of keeping the wolves away from the lambs and the sheep. That's all. And uh, I believe in long, 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 long prison terms for uh, serious crimes. Mm -hmm. It's one thing for people to do uh, stealing or thievery. But as soon as they start using violence, the right of violence, then they should be put away for a long, long, maybe till retirement age or something like that. And that's just if it's it's well proved, uh, and if they're, they're, let's say they're 15 years old, you know, 15 years old, uh, well, guys can be very dangerous. They, yeah, I know, but at I least mean, 18 years old until uh, retirement I, age. Gone. I, I think the age of adulthood is not until 25, no. but in no. you know it's not until the prefrontal cortex okay. is finished forming. But 25 to 65, the person does so. Uh, like uh, George Floyd, when uh, uh, the, the claim was that he didn't do, uh, uh, that he actually didn't hold a gun to a woman. He was part of the whole venture. All he had to do was sing, you know, like, hey guys, do do do. This is the guy that was holding the gun. They were just using my car, you know, like he, he didn't, uh, it was oh, definitely his knows. car they were using. That's all he had to do, but he should have been put away for 40 years. I believe that's what they were threatening him. Instead, he got five years. Okay, well, in any case, the bone season, the bone seasons are, are a decent watch. I was surprised. Were they always as gory, or did they, oh. did they, they were always, okay. They seemed really gory to me. But anyway, um, go ahead and talk about Peter Baum, D. Something like it. The uh, kind of like the maybe you might say the invisible fly. Mm -hmm. So I'll show a picture of Peter Bam. Mm -hmm. Peter Bam. You don't think I'm calling him a bum? There you go. He was a medical guy. I think he's a surgeon for the German army in World War II. I also served, I think, for a little while in World War I, maybe doing uh, medical work. He's not dealing with the World War I experience. In this book, it's his World War II experience. So, I'll show a map of 
that reveals some of the stuff, places that he was dealing with. So there's Krim, that's Crimea, and um, Kherson has recently been liberated by the Ukrainians from the Russians. Um, Litopol, that was taken over by the Russians in not very uh, nice fashion. So Crimea has been claimed by the Russians. They don't have a legitimate claim to it at all. Only a claim by a conquest and stuff like that. So uh, it's uh, much a, uh, there's Stalino, it's not called that anymore. Named after Stalin. So I've been reading a lot of German recently. Of various sorts, some of the history, some of the literature, some of the language, so on and so forth. Some of it is Viennese cooking. But, um, I'm particularly interested in, uh, this, so this is, uh, these books are dealing with stuff that's uh, basically contemporary. You know, this is a this medical soldier's view of things. Uh, this is um, kind of a Hitler, a worm's eye, Hitler's eye view of things as uh, I was dealing with this yesterday. And I, I wanted to finish up what I was talking about yesterday with the Salaga Besprechen uh, and situation discussions, situation room discussions, um, consultations, whatever. Towards the end, um, you know, like uh, of this, Hitler starts changing his tune, you know, like in Mein Kampf, I think it's written in 1923, something like that, when he's in Landsberg jail. As a result, I mean, he should have been in jail for life for what he, he tried to carry out a putsch, a, a Munich Beer Hall putsch. He tried to overthrow the democratic government of Germany, and all he got was basically a slap on the hand, you know, like he was in jail. And, the prison guards were all like, like fawning over him and all this kind of stuff. You can imagine. And uh, he was out after maybe a couple of years. It's insane. It shouldn't have been a couple of decades. It should have been a couple of lifetimes for doing that kind of stuff. I mean, it involved guns and all this sort of stuff in the streets. It was shameful. But uh, yeah, he wrote Mein Kampf there and uh, so on and so forth. And I don't know when it was published, maybe 1925 or so on. So. But he makes it quite clear that. Uh, he wanted to turn Russia, Eastern Europe, basically, into a slave state, you know, and get slaves from there, and they, they take over their land and use it to uh, enrich Germans and Germany generally. Uh, so, uh, you know, when uh, they start getting pushed back, they push well into Russia. They basically almost surrounded St. Petersburg or Leningrad, as it was then called. Uh, they basically taken over all of the ultimate. Stalingrad, which is on the Volga River, right? near its, uh, where the bush is into the Caspian Sea, there's only Astrakhan, big city south of it, and uh, uh, made it into kind of like the uh, outskirts of Moscow, maybe the Lenin Hills or stuff like that. I've been there, there's a nice uh, university there, it overlooks, you know, it'd be great for setting up guns up there, You're just overlooking Moscow and stuff, kind of like in this valley, you know, uh, stuff like that, the Lenin Hills up to the west. So uh, they'd really push well into uh, Russia and uh, made it past Grozny, the capital of Chechnya. Ch Chechens aren't Russians, not even close, but that's another story. Anyway. Once he gets pushed out of Russia and stuff like that, or once he, you know, like into the Ukraine and so on and so forth, he's saying the German nation is threatened. This is a decisive experience. You know, this is where we determine whether we should uh, live or die. You know, survival of the fittest, all this sort of stuff. See, he changed his tune. And I'm afraid that's going to be, and you know, the, the big trouble is Germany suffered more from going his route, like, uh, dying to the last monster or something like that, the last, or the last teenager, uh, you know, like uh, cities in ruin, all this sort of stuff. They suffered more than if they'd surrendered when, when the war turned. You know, once it, was, it should have been evident to any rational person that they were going to lose and lose badly. They should have just surrendered, got rid of Hitler, whacked him, or whatever they had to do. But uh, 
Now in uh, Russia, I'm afraid uh, this is uh, the kind of rhetoric that already that we're getting from uh, Putin, that uh, stupid idiot, you know, like this is about the survival of Russia. He doesn't mention it's the Russian Empire, you know, it's an empire. It's still a prison of nations. There might be 85 nationalities imprisoned in this hugest country in the world. It might be uh, twice the size of Canada or more. Basically the size of North America, Canada and the United States, maybe even a little bit more. It used to be, the Soviet Union used to be more uh, than uh, North America outside of Mexico. So uh, the, the Russian Empire doesn't deserve to survive anymore. Well, actually, way less than the British Empire or even the French Empire. You know, because it's 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 never really been ruled democratically, kind of like during the 90s, from 1991 to 1999, 2000 or something like that, kind of democratic. But nine years doesn't make uh, for an enlightened empire. It has to be, I'm not going to say smashed, because I don't like that. I, it has to be taken apart, hopefully uh, nice and, in a nice and civilized fashion and uh, put into its component pieces. I'm not talking about the Ukraine. The Ukraine doesn't belong to Russia at all. Never uh, should have. But I'm talking about Tatarstan. I'm talking about the, what are they called, the Komi up in, this is in European so-called Russia. They should be taken away. The Buryat uh, so-called Republic, way off in the relatively far east. Uh, they're basically Mongolians. It's all got to be taken away from the Russians. Every, every piece of land how much time? Three minutes? A couple of minutes. A couple of minutes. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about Peter. I maybe should talk more about Peter Bum uh, tomorrow because there's a, a lot of stuff in here. You know? Oh, okay. So I'll just leave it at that. I did want to finish up the Lagerbush Reckoning. That's finished now. Okay. That's the take home thing. You know, like uh, we got this crazy Hitler saying, <coughs> we've got to, we got to defend our, our homeland. And, uh, is saying the same thing. I keep on saying it. <coughs> and Russians, unfortunately, are believing it. Russians, you folks that are, get a chance to hear this, you have no right. You have no right to own any land in Asia over the Rao Mountains. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. Any more than <coughs> England had any right to be in Asia. No, England had no right to be in, in uh, India. In India. Yeah. There we go.